from leaning not on our own understanding to casting down wicked imaginations. We're here to study to show ourselves approved here a little and there a little. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Stick to the Script. Let's read the Bible now. Hello, hello, hello. Good day, brothers and sisters, and welcome to another episode of Stick to the Script, where we teach by a biblical perspective, ladies and gentlemen. We go line upon line, we go precept upon precept, we go here a little and there a little. So please subscribe to our page, ladies and gentlemen, like and share. This is an Isla God production coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona, and we believe in keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. And God's house is a house of prayer for all people. Well, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I would love to get started. Um, it, it is a great day today. Um, praise God in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me introduce our panel. Absolutely. Bless the Lord. We have our brother, wonderful brothers with us today, wonderful brothers in Christ. Uh, we have our brother from Montgomery, Alabama, Brother Thomas. Um, how are you yes, doing sir. today, my brother? And thank you, thank you, and welcome. I'm doing good, brother. Peace in Jesus' name. It's good to be here, man. Good to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good to have you, my brother. Good to have you. And we also got our beloved elder here at the IOT Phoenix. How you doing, elder? Bless, brother. Bless. Amen. Brother, brother, brother Jedediah. Yes, sir. And then we also have our beloved brother, brother Ahava, right here from our very own Phoenix, Arizona. How you doing, my brother? Grace and priest, brothers, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. All right, all right. Sounds good. Well, I tell you what, uh, without further ado, uh, we can get started. We can get started today, ladies and gentlemen. And today, our title again is, it's a teacher's script. So today we have three individual teachers who will be bringing their own separate lessons today, brothers and sisters. And we are going to get the word of God, brothers and sisters, according to salvation. So I'll start off the teacher script. And today, what I want to talk about, brothers and sisters, is the patience of the saints. The patience of the saints, ladies and gentlemen. What is the patience of the saints? All right. Um, is to fear God and, and to um, the patience of the saints is to keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot have one without the other. Without further ado, and, and, that, and that's what I want to show today, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, we'll get started. Let's just go straight to Revelations. We're going to go straight to the book of Revelations, ladies and gentlemen, the 14th chapter. Revelations, the 14th chapter. Again, we this is regarding the patience of the saints. Brother Hobbin, when you get to Revelations 14th chapter, can you just read verse 12 for me right now, please? Revelation 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And that's right. And and I'm done with the lesson. There's the patience of the saints. No, I'm just playing, brothers and sisters. But listen, <laughs> this, this is the patience of the saints. Those that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. So we cannot just have the faith in jesus christ like a lot of us say because if you really have faith in jesus christ and you really love him ladies and gentlemen you would keep his commandments understanding what he did for you okay so let's take a look at it we cannot have one without the other and if you notice the commandments it was first all right um let's take a look read verse 13 for me please verse 13 and i heard a voice from heaven saying unto me right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. That's right. So blessed are the dead which died in the Lord from henceforth. So blessed are those that kept the commandments of God and had the faith in Jesus Christ and, um, and took on the baptism 
and and took on the covenant uh, with God, ladies and gentlemen, saying all that all that ye say we will do, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take. I want to take a look because it says the dead which die in Christ. All right, but we also die to Christ, being alive through His baptism, ladies and gentlemen. And this is very important when it comes to the patience of the saints, because of course it's the faith of Jesus Christ as well. Let's go to Romans six chapter. Romans six chapter, my brother. I'm sorry. We're gonna go a little bit further. Romans the sixth chapter. Let's go to Romans the sixth chapter. Let's take a look at the baptism a little bit. Uh, Romans 6, read verses 3 to 4 for me, please. Romans 6, 3 through 4. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are baptized with him by baptism into death. That right, that light, as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. That's right. So even so, we also should walk in newness of life, put away this old sinful flesh and stop walking in sin, ladies and gentlemen, and start walking according to the spirit and, and love one another, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But it says we are buried with him through his baptism unto death. So when we baptize, we also die in Christ, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we, we kill the flesh that we walk in and we we put on the mind of Christ and get rid of this old wicked mind and start walking in the newness of life because let's keep on reading and find out let's read verses 5 read verses 5 through 6 my brother please for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. That's right. So we should all be we should also be in the likeness of his resurrection, ladies and gentlemen, at his coming. And this is what the saints are so patiently waiting for. The coming of the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, the kingdom of God, ladies and gentlemen. This is the what the pace uh the saints so patiently wait for. All right. Now let's take a look at something else. After you have been baptized. After you've been buried with him by baptism unto death, let's see if you can continue to sin, ladies and gentlemen, after you have that faith in Jesus Christ. Because remember, the patience of the saints is to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Galatians, the second chapter, my brother. Let's go to Galatians, the second chapter. We'll go a little bit further. Galatians, the second chapter. Galatians, the second chapter. All right, my brother, when you get to Galatians, the second chapter, if you can for me, read verse 17, please. But if while we seek to justify, to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. That's right. So it says, while we seek to be justified by the Lord and his, in his blood, while you call on the name of the Lord, it says, you know, you call on the name of his Lord and seek to be justified, but should you yet be found sinners? Is Christ the minister of sin? All right, so Christ was a man without sin, and we have to destroy this flesh and begin to walk in the spirit and begin to walk as he walked, and he was a man without sin. Not saying that uh, we'll be able to go through this walk um, just completely without sin, but just make sure it's not willfully, ladies and gentlemen. But it says, okay, let me take a look. It says, is Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. You can't say you believe in Jesus Christ and yet said he got rid of the commandments, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, read verses 20 through 21 for me, please. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ live in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for it is righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. That's right. So if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is, is dead in vain, ladies and gentlemen. Which law is that? The, the law of animal sacrifice. You come to do away with that, ladies and gentlemen. That was the law that was nailed to the cross. The law of animal sacrifice he, he came to do away with because it was a schoolmaster to lead us unto christ uh, ladies and gentlemen and then once he shed his blood that is the, that's 
That's when faith came, ladies and gentlemen, because the blood, the blood of bulls and goats cannot wash away your sins or clean your conscience, ladies and gentlemen. And it says, let me read this. It says, if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And a lot of people say that today when you say, hey, okay, Christ came, died for us. Now we have a free, you know, we came, took away the Ten Commandments, you know. Um, sin is transgression of the law, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so breaking the law is sin. So if you're saying he came and died and just got rid of the law, that means he came and died for you while you were yet sinners. God was manifesting the flesh. He came and died for you because of the, the, the sin that came upon all men due to what happened in the Garden of Eden with Adam. So now he comes and dies for the sin of man. And then says, okay, you can go continue doing exactly what you was doing. That's the exact reason why I came here, just go continue to do it, ladies and gentlemen. It, does, it doesn't make sense. He didn't come and die for your sins and tell you you continue to sin. So you have to have the faith in Jesus Christ and keep his commandments, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let's go to the next verse in First Peter, the first chapter. First Peter, the first chapter. First Peter, the first chapter. And when you get there, my brother, go ahead and read three through five for me, please. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant, mer abundant mercy has, become, uh, has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the res resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance mm -hmm. incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of god through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time that's right so it says to inheritance incorruptible undefiled that fadeth not away ladies and gentlemen this is the the kingdom of the father which no incorruption will inherit and not even this corrupted body that's why we also must have to make that change in order to um, inherit the kingdom of the Father, ladies and gentlemen. But this is why we so patiently wait on the Lord for that change. And, and this is why we believe in him and keep his commandments until he comes, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let's go take a look at that. Um, at uh, first, Let's go a little bit further. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. To salvation ready to be revealed in the last time at the coming of the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. That's when our salvation will be revealed. That's when we'll be saved, ladies and gentlemen, but not in no time before. When you get there, my brother, read verses 51 through 53, please. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this inc for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality and tell them why that is brother in verse 50 if you can go ahead and read please so this i say brethren that that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither do of corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, that's okay, okay, that's right. So flesh and blood, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so if we want to make it to the kingdom of God, we must have we must make that change. And if we want to make that change, we have to believe in Jesus and keep His commandments and be patient, ladies and gentlemen, and be patient and patiently wait for that and believe that. Let's go to our last scripture here, uh, James. James, the fifth chapter, my brother. Let's go to James, the fifth chapter. James, the fifth chapter. James 5, read verses 7 through 8. James 5, verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. That's, that's right. Be patient, ladies and gentlemen. 
Establish your heart for the Lord cometh nigh. So in the meantime, keep the faith in Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen, and keep his commandments and look forward to the kingdom of God. And I thank you for your time. And I'll give it back up to the panel. Wow. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I like how you led out with that uh, patience of the saints, man, coming from that 14, uh, Revelation 14 and 12. You know, here's the patience of the saints. You know, they that keep the commandments of God and, and the faith in Jesus. Uh, we know that those are the two prop proponents that we need for salvation. You know, you also touched on uh, putting away the old man and walking in the spirit. And Romans uh, 7 and 14 lets us know that the law is spiritual. So in order to walk uh, in the spirit, we must keep the law. You know what I'm saying? So I was definitely That's edified right. by this, brother. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, with that being said, I'm going to pass it back to the panel. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, my yeah. brother. Yes, yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. I mean, uh, the patience of the state, brother. I mean, what else can you say? Like you said, and off from the offset, you know, that's about all we really need. But, you know, there's more to it because um, uh, the Lord's book is just full of wisdom. But here is also the patience of the saints uh, in, in Ephesians 1 and 3. It, it let us know. He says, blessed be God and the Father, our Lord uh, Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. And in Ephesians 2 and 8, it says, For by grace ye are saved through faith. Mm. And that yes, not of yourself, it is the gift of God. So that's what the patience, patience of the saints, brother, um, you know, is based on. It's the foundation of, you know. So I thank you, brother, for bringing that up, pointing it out, and it's such a blessing, you know, and I was uh, completely edified by those scriptures, uh, and I'll turn it back over to the panel. Amen. 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 Okay, and uh, with that being said, I guess I'm going to jump straight into mine, you know. Um, the brother touched on a lot of stuff, man, that really could go into mine, you know, in, into my lesson. So uh, with that being said, uh, we're going to get straight into it. Uh, the whole duty of man. We're going to start in Exodus 31, 18. When you get that, brother, go ahead. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doeth sacrifice you, sanctify you. Ye shall keep you shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely put, be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from amongst his people. You can start. You can uh, skip to uh, verse 18, brother. And he gave unto Moses, and he and he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tablets of testimony, table of stone, table of stone written with the finger of God. So we see here, this is when uh, Moses was initially, uh, initially received the commandments of God that were written by God in stone, um, not written by man, not written by an angel, but written by God. This is why this is so important. And anytime you hear somebody use the phrase uh, or idiom etched in stone, set in stone, written in stone, this literally means that whatever has been established, uh, whether it be rules or customs, they cannot be changed at all. So uh, let's go to the next scripture, brother. Uh, Exodus 32, 15 through 16. Exodus 32, verse 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. And the two tablets of the testimony were in his hand. And the tablets were written upon both, uh, both their sides. On the one side and on the other side were they written. And the tablets were the works, work of God. And the writings were the writings of God. Graven upon the tablets. And with, and with Again. Okay, go ahead, bro. Again, uh, reiterating the fact that these commandments were written by God and written in stone. So again, they cannot be changed. Okay, you can go ahead, brother. Uh, let's pick it up in Deuteronomy 10. Okay. 
Okay. You ready? Do go have ten and one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At that time, the Lord said unto me, Hew these two tables of stone like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount, and make thee an art of wood. And I will write on the tablets the words that were in the first tablets which thou breakest, and thou shalt put them in the ark. And I made an ark of shitten wood, and shewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and went up into the mount, having the two tables in mine hand. And he wrote on the tables according to the first writing the Ten Commandments, which the Lord spake unto you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them unto me. And I turned myself and came down from the mountain and put the tablets in the ark which I had made. And there they be, as the Lord commanded me. Okay, you can skip down to verse 12, brother. 12 and 13. And now, Israel... What doeth the Lord thy God require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and to keep his commandments, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Okay, so this is after Israel committed idolatry with the golden calf. God instructed Moses to come uh, hew out two more stones you know, uh, to go through the whole process again, because we know God is not a, a vain God and he didn't give commandments for nothing. Uh, and, and again, it was etched in stone, you know, so these laws could not change. And uh, this is God again, you know, uh, requiring the people to love him and keep his commandments. Okay, so let's go to uh, First Kings chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. First Kings 2 and 3. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and with and whithsoever thou turnest with thyself. And wheresoever thou okay. turnest thyself. Excuse me. And here and, we uh, see King... Here we see King David instructing his son Solomon to keep God's statutes and commandments that he may prosper in all that he does. So being prosperous is a benefit of keeping God's commandments. So with that, we're going to go to our Psalms, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. You don't want four? Uh, just 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of, of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in, in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like the, a tree planted by the river, rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Okay, here we have, um, we see that we are supposed to delight in God's law and meditate in it day and night. It's supposed to constantly be at the forefront of our minds without ceasing. Also, it shows us here that, you know, we will prosper if we keep his laws and his commandments. So with that being said, let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Proverbs 6, 23. For the commandment is a is a light, is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So it says here that the commandment is a lamp and the law is a light. What does light do? Well, light illumin, uh, illuminates, it exposes, it reveals. When you walk into a dark room and you cut on the light, you see things that you couldn't see before. Just as, in the same way as life, when you keep God's uh, laws and commandments, it shows you things in this life that you couldn't see before. You know, they guide you through this life and to salvation. You know, so with that being said, let's go to Acts 24, 14. 
Let's see what Paul got to say about the law. See if it's done away with. Acts 24 and 14. Acts 24 and 14. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Here we see Paul making a confession that he believes in all things written in the law and in the prophets. Not some things, but all things. Paul did not cherry pick according to how he felt. He kept the law. He kept all things. So let's go see what Jesus got to say in Matthew uh, chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. Let's see if Jesus did away with the law. Matthew 5, verse 17. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass, not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whatsoever therefore shall break, whosoever therefore shall break, excuse me, one of these least commandments and shall teach men so he shall be he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven but whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven for i say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and pharisees ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven so Jesus, uh, in verse 17, we see Jesus did not come to destroy the law. So that means the law is still in effect. You know, the law ain't going nowhere. Uh, when it goes down, it says, whoever break uh, the least of these commandments or teach the people to do so, they go into the lake of fire. Then it says, whosoever keep the commandments and teach the, com the people to keep the commandments, they will be called great in the kingdom. So we see Jesus here still promote the keeping of the commandments. Let's go to uh, John chapter 14, verse 15. Pick it up at 15, then we'll hit uh, 21 and 23 through 24. John 14 and 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Down to 21. Okay. Right. He that have my commandments, he keepeth them. He it is that loveth me, loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be love of my father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, Not a scarecus, not a scarecus, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So we see here, uh, this is how you prove your love for Jesus, by keeping his commandments. If you don't keep his commandments, then there's no way you can love him according to what Jesus is saying. So uh, either we're going to believe that you love him and you're keeping his commandments, or you saying you love him and you ain't keeping no commandments. Somebody lying, but we're going to get to the bottom of it. Let's go to uh, John 15 and 14. John 15, verse 14. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Right here, Jesus says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. If you keep the commandments of Jesus, he considers you a friend. If you don't keep the commandments of Jesus, you're not his friend. It's that simple. That's why I love this book. It makes it so plain. Let's go to, uh, let's wrap it up. Let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter... Uh, 12 and verse 13. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. Let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And this is the conclusion of it all, fearing God and keeping his commandments. With that being said, I give it back to the panel. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank you Amen. so much. Amen. Amen. Uh, the whole duty of man. Yes, sir. And um, 
I'd like to add this to it. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, 10 and uh, 12, uh, 12 and 13, it says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to love him, to serve him, uh, to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord, and his statutes, uh, which I command thee this day um, for thy good. This is uh, the duty, uh, a whole duty of, of our uh, our responsibility um, to our own salvation, all right, to, in seeking the Lord. Also, we go to uh, Revelation 2 and 26. It says, and he that overcomes, this is the reward for the, our duty, uh, the whole duty of man is serving the Lord and his commandments. It says, and he that overcomes, and keeps my work until the end. That do your duty until the end. To him I will give power over the nations. So it's something to look forward to when um, you've done what you're supposed to, according to what the Lord says, and keeping His law, statutes, His commandments. You know, and fearing Him. Uh, that's the first uh, uh, fear is the first thing to the wisdom of the Lord. So. My brother, thank you for bringing that to the forefront, and I'll turn it back over to the panel. Thank you so much, bro. Amen, amen. Yeah, thank you, Brother Jedediah. Thank you as well, Brother Thomas, for the wonderful scriptures and, you know, it's the commandments, the roadmap to salvation. Um, so that was a very good lesson and very edifying for the people to know. Uh, man, I got a lot out of it, my brother. Uh, and when I when I was listening to you, on the scriptures, I kept thinking, man, the commandments of God, these are like the, the characteristics of God, right? You know, and man is, is created in the image of God. So he is trying to show us how to be like him and walk like him, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, when we keep the commandments, they see God in us or they see Jesus in us, you know. Um, this is what it's all about. That's why Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And it also says, any man who say they love me and keep not my commandments is a liar and the truth is not in them, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and that's deep. And, and and that's why we see no love in the world today because iniquity has a bound, sin has a bound, and people are breaking the commandments. And the love of many has waxed cold. And now people look in the world and cannot see God. Um, so it's very important to keep those commandments. It is the whole duty of man, and it is what will get us eternal salvation as long as with the faith of Jesus Christ. So I thank you very much for those scriptures, my brother, on the whole duty of man. And uh, that was very edifying. And I'll give it back over to the panel. Yes, sir. Um, all right, man. This is, this is such a, a wonderful uh, subject when we do the teacher script because we get a variety, man of uh, different approaches and subjects. And now I want to, uh, want to contribute. My uh, contribution is going to be um, the Holy Ghost. Uh, is it a Holy Ghost or is it strong delusions? Uh, they're what we used to call it, what I used to call, uh, used to be the sanctified church. You know, man, um, these people used to dance and shout and run uh, in the church for hours. I mean, even uh, with the music blasting and everything. And I'm going to tell you, um, when I was about 10 years old, my mother would, she allowed me to uh, uh, go to church with one of her, her girl's friends. And she took me to a sanctified church. I was 10 years old. Man, it was this sister, man, real healthy sister, man. She was a healthy sister. She got, man, all upset and everything. And, and, and uh, she hollered and screamed and fainted and fell over on me. And I'm going to tell you, at 10 years old, man, I could not get out from under that woman. But when they got me out from under that woman, I ran out of that church, man, and I sat outside until uh, that thing, the whole service was over. And, and I, I didn't go back to a sanctified church ever after that again. But now look here, man. I'm not saying that it's a HD, AD, uh, ADHD type of thing. Now, I, I got to put that, that uh, PDF up for me, brother. Now, ADHD, it means attention deficit uh, hyperactivity disorder, right? Which is a, a, it's a treatable neurobehavioral disorder, all right? Now, 
they, they like to call it getting the Holy Ghost. Okay, but Scripture says that the Comforter is, uh, uh, which is with the, which is the Holy Ghost, and and whom the Father will send in Jesus' name, and He will teach us all things and bring all things to remembrance, whosoever Jesus, um, and whatsoever Jesus has said unto us. That's in the Scriptures. Now that's in John uh, fourteen and twenty six. Now, but look, let me ask: by running around and hollering and screaming. Um, as they do in these so-called holiness churches, does that help them to bring remembrance um, uh, according to what the scripture says? And these modern day forms of Christianity say that they caught the Holy Spirit. Now, are the Holy Spirit chasing them or are, uh, are they chasing the Holy Spirit? The Lord doesn't really work that way, not the way that they think. And that can be turned, really turned against them. Brother, would you read Isaiah 63 and 10 for me, please? Isaiah 61 and 10. 63, Isaiah 63 and 10. 63 and 10. But they, but they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to, to be their enemy and he fought against them. See the... They, they, man, look, they, they gave the Holy Spirit the flux, and the Lord did not like that, and, and the Lord raised up against them. Now, these people run around, you know, run into walls, fainting, screaming, you know, uh, and they think it's that they're doing something holy, you know, and they don't realize that they're really under a delusion, having their minds seared uh, by these false doctrines that are out here. Would you please read 1 Timothy 4? One and two for me, brother. First Timothy four. One and two. If you don't have it, I have it right here. I have it. Now the Spirit speaking expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Yes, sir. Forbidding See, they're saying that they're, they're, they're serving uh, uh, doctrines of devils, lies. And, and because of that, the Lord tells us what he'll do uh, to them, you know, for their transgressions. Would you read Isaiah 29, 9 and 10 for me, please? Isaiah 29, 9 and 10. Stay yourselves in wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and have closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers have he covered. He said that they're drunk, but not with wine and their eyes are closed. People. That's not how the Holy Spirit, uh, that's not what the Holy Spirit is doing. They, they're not causing them to run around crazy and everything. What it is, it's a strong delusion uh, from the Lord because they continue to follow strange doctrines instead of keeping the commandments of God. And they're really deceiving themselves. Would you please read 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 through 12 for me, brother, please. 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 10. And all are deceit and all are deceivableness, deceivableness, and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for all this cause God shall send them strong delusions, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. He says that the strong delusions that they might believe a lie, right? Um, this is set up by the Lord. And the Lord says that they will keep them in a deep sleep. That's spiritually speaking. And it's not really appealing to the Lord. He even asked this question in Psalms 2 and 1. Would you read uh, just uh, Psalms 2 and 1 for me, brother? Psalms 2, verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? 
Why do they raise? Why do they imagine uh, or put um, uh, 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 their time into something that's that's not going to benefit them? But the Lord is going to shake His head at them, uh, and and and, uh, and and He's going to laugh. Read uh, verse four, brother. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in in derision. He's going to have them in derision. What this means is that he's saying that he's going to ridicule them. He's going to mock them. And it's because they've taken the, uh, the word of God in vain. Now, let's look at what it says in uh, 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. 2 Timothy 4, 3. For the yes, time sir. will come. Three and four. Verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away from their and they, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. See, the only thing itching ears uh, is good for us for lies because these people uh, love lies. I I even heard one time uh, online a preacher uh, said that people don't know the beauty of holiness or the beauty of the Holy Ghost. He says. Uh, that the Holy Ghost is God and he gets in him and he moves in him and then he deals with him and then he reveals himself to him, which causes him to speak gibberish and to uh, gyrate and to run around like he's having an epileptic seizure. And he calls that being holy. The word of God is what holy. The Lord himself is who is holy. Nothing that's going to be moving around up in you. It has to affect your mind, his word does, and not your body. But it says in Hosea 10 and 13, let's look at that, brother. Read that for me, please. Hosea uh, chapter 10, verse 13. Yes, sir. Ye have, plowed, ye have plowed wickedness. Ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies because thou didst trust in thy way in the multitude of thy mighty men. It says he has plowed wickedness. That means they mined it like this mine and gold. They were digging up wickedness just to eat the fruit of lies. So therefore the Lord is going to allow them to become whatever it is they so choose because you know he gives everyone free will. And whatever they so choose, they can be stuck right there and get caught up in it uh, really all up into e all the way to eternity. Uh, let's read Roman 1 and 28, brother. Please that, uh, set that out. Romans 1. 128. Yes, sir. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Say a reprobate mind. When he turns you over to a reprobate mind, you can't even you can't even get back to him. So he warns everyone uh, of, of such wickedness, such as that. And in, in Isaiah five and twenty, he says, "Woe to them that call evil good and good evil." And they're going around telling everybody that they're so holy, when actually it's just the opposite. And this is because they have uh, they lack the willingness to follow the Lord. Uh, but yet they'll follow strange idols and gods and familiar spirits. They are people that are twisted and, and uh, they will follow about any doctrine that's set before them. And these are also the people that are described in Isaiah 30 and 10. Would you read that for me, brother? Which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things prophesied deceits they love the lies the small things they are the ones that will be in derision they'll be confused dismayed drunk uh not with wine though and again uh, the lord will tell them uh that he will laugh at them as as he says in proverbs 1 26 uh through 28 brother read that proverbs 1 and 26 I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when you when your fear cometh. And when your fear cometh as a desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, 
but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Therefore, it is written in Matthew 7 and 21, uh, for those that have been sorely led astray. Would you read that, brother? Matthew 7 and 21. Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. They've definitely been misled and led away from God instead of being led to God. But if they stick to the script, they would have righteous faith instead of strong delusion. They would have glory instead of shame. They would have salvation instead of damnation. As it is so written, it shall so it also shall be in Jesus' name. Amen. So I will turn it back over to the uh, panel and I thank you for allowing me to uh, have my little uh, input in that. Say amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. And, and thank you for those scriptures, my brother. Very edifying and something that we, we definitely need to know. Um, because the Holy yes, Ghost. A, absolutely. A, a lot of people don't understand it. And the Holy Ghost is um, comes to us by keeping the commandments, ladies and gentlemen. We're, we're not able to receive um, this spirit if we don't keep the Lord's right. uh, commandments. So um right there we go again with the patience of the saints and there we go with the whole duty of man the commandments you know this this is this is what it's all about ladies and gentlemen and and um a good understanding have all those that keep his commandments ladies and gentlemen that's what the book's saying and you have that understanding because of the holy ghost that will lead you and guide you into all truth because you have kept those commandments but yes, sir. nowadays you can absolutely so um yeah, and in the same churches, what, what what makes it so bad is, um, well, I want to say it like that, but there's a big misunderstanding in, in in the same churches today because if you cannot receive the Holy Ghost unless you keep His commandments, um, but a lot of the churches today say you don't have to keep the commandments, but yet still say they received the Holy Ghost. So, um, again, He came to inform us, and um, they are ministering spirits, and 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 here's a um heirs of those according to salvation. So um, there's definitely something to pay attention to, but I definitely thank you for those scriptures, uh, my brother. And um, I'll give it back up to the panel. Yes, sir. Uh, that's definitely uh, an edifying word, uh, Brother Jedediah. It made me think about, you know, when I was going to Sunday church and seeing people run around and scream and high blah and jump over pews and I'm thinking something wrong with me because I ain't caught this Holy Spirit yet. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I know, I, I know I'm going to hell because I ain't got it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it also made me think about, you know, uh, Romans 10 and 13 that said, well, 10 and 3, Romans 10 and 3 that says, uh, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God, you know? And so that goes back to like Brother Wendell said, you know, keeping the commandments because that's the only way you'll get that spirit, you know. But by them not knowing and making up their own rules, they definitely not sticking to the script, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I pass it back to the panel. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for that. That's our show for the day, brothers and I. I thank you for that. I thank you for that as well. But yes, brothers and sisters, that is our show for the day. We definitely appreciate you tuning in and we definitely hope and pray that you come back um to hear these scriptures ladies and gentlemen and and and, and seek salvation um but thank you very much i want to thank my brothers here that came with us today brother thomas again coming from um montgomery thank you very Amen. much my brother and beloved elder jedediah and our reader for the day this good reading brother brother um brother havile sorry about that. I, I just forgot <laughs> sorry my brother brother Ahaba, you good thank, uh, brother Ahaba. i also want to thank um our brother brother elder brother rashan um he is behind the scenes he takes care of all the work behind the scenes and he does um a wonderful job you see the screens moving you see the names changing you see everything he's going done. on and he's working he's working it so i just want to praise god uh for for brother Rashan, brother our elder rashan as well um 
And we'll leave it at that. Again, I want to thank you very much for tuning in. Again, if you like what you heard, the word of God, please subscribe, like, and share, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen. But until, until then, please join us next time for another episode of Stick to the Script. Peace. Amen. Peace, peace, peace. From leaning not on our own understanding to casting down wicked imaginations, we're here to study to show ourselves approved here a little and there a little. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Stick to the Script. Let's read the Bible now.